Swahili Nation family, welcome back to another recap. And today we have a lot to talk about. A Kenyan man and his Ethiopian wife have been awarded 17.3 million shillings as compensation for being harassed by police in the United States of America. Mr. Yama Khalif and his wife Hawi Awash were awarded the cash by the state of California after they were racially profiled at a shop they operated. Well, it was a settlement outside of court because the police knew they messed up and it was caught on camera actually. And the whole thing is alarming how, you know, the US police just looks at a black person and assumes that that property doesn't belong to you or you're stealing or you're up to something that's not good. And it's really, really sad. So the current victim were the Kenyan man and his wife and they are richer than they were before. But also I think it's good to understand what goes on outside of Africa whenever we're wishing or like deciding on moving outside of our country our continent we have to understand what awaits for us there it's usually racism there is discrimination and look at this couple they probably thought oh we're okay in this environment but you're not so I think this also shows us that um, it's good to build where we are and it is good to focus on ourselves in our own countries I can't imagine facing racism and just letting it go it, it just does something to your spirit I think and I'm glad they got their settlement but there are so many of our brothers and sisters in the diaspora community that have to face this racism day in and day out Nurse arrested for insulting Malawian President Lazarus Chakowera. Police in Malawi have arrested a nurse at Nchu District Hospital for allegedly insulting President Lazarus. National Police Deputy Spokesperson Hari Namwaza said Ms. Chidawawa, the nurse, was 39 years old, who has since been charged with cyber harassment, was arrested Saturday after allegedly insulting the president on WhatsApp. The nurse is said to have insulted the president after a debate emerged on a WhatsApp forum regarding Malawi's economic situation. This makes me sad. Just <sighs> this nurse was voicing her opinion. I understand, you know, there's always a better way to do it. And maybe insulting someone is not right, but I don't think you should go to jail over it. We should all have freedom to speech. And as long as hear me out here as long as it's not pushing for um, somebody to get violent with you or it does it's not how do I explain this because this is tricky you know there's a difference between me saying something that will risk your life versus me saying this economy is going down because of this president what kind of person is he you know Maybe she used um, a bad word while describing him, but you can clearly see it, it was a discussion um, about the economic growth of Malawi. So I think everybody should have a right to speak their mind, to criticize their government, as long as it's not pushing or supporting violence. That's my opinion. And I know it's tricky and I know it's hard to cross the boundary and we always have to make sure that we, in a way, protect our civilians and protect them from um, this people that are online hiding behind the screen and creating chaos in a country I know that trust me I'm from Ethiopia and this happened to us as well but what I'm trying to say is in this case this nurse was talking about the economic growth and how this president didn't help so if criticizing a leader gets you arrested then I mean is there even democracy in that country a white South African is in court for shooting a black woman he claims he mistook for a hippo a 77-year-old white South African farm owner has appeared in court after shooting and wounding a black woman he claimed he mistook for a hippo. Paul Hendrick was arrested on Tuesday after firing shots in the direction of the woman, Lena, who was fishing with her partner in a river in northern Limpopo province. He faces attempted murder charges according to the National Prosecuting Authority. Police spokesperson said, the arrested suspect alleged that he was shooting at the animals. You cannot tell me that a human being, a 38-year-old woman, resembles a hippo. You know what a hippo looks like? You know how big they are? 
how in the world can you mistake a human being to a hippo? Not just that. Human beings wear clothes, no? I'm sure this young lady had clothes on. Which hippo have you ever seen with clothing on? It just does not make sense. He not only shot her, but he's also insulting her. He's not only insulting her, he's insulting the whole race. And this is not the first time. A few years ago, a white South African farmer shot his own employee. And when he was questioned, he said he thought it was a monkey. So you can't tell me this is a mistake. And I hope he pays the price. And this is not fair. I, I, I don't know how black South Africans are expected to live peacefully with people that are constantly discriminating against them and killing them. It just does not make sense to me. Apple under pressure over minerals from DR Congo. A new report has warned that a scheme set up to ensure mining in the Democratic Republic of Congo does not fuel conflict is being abused to launder tainted minerals. Global witnesses say companies including Apple, Tesla, and Intel are relying on the due diligence scheme to source minerals that are widely used in electronic equipment such as mobile phones, computers, and automotives. Those behind the initiative have denied the allegations. Of course, they're going to deny it. Like, their whole profit depends on it. If DR Congo tomorrow stands up and they're like no 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 this has not been going well which i've seen they're doing quite a bit and um they they are they are um reviewing contracts that they have been given they have been giving international companies and they've been showing some kind of um interest to fixing the problem which is a great thing but as of now you know the apples of this world the teslas they are profiting off of this conflict, off of this um, instability in DR Congo. For example, the mining plants, some of them are being handled by armed groups. Imagine the profits are now going to the masses, to the people. And even when it's not being managed by these armed groups, it is being mined by people that are using illegal means, which means, again, tax is not being paid, hence people are not benefiting from this. So it, it's really good that um, big corporations like Apple or Tesla or Intel are being investigated because they need to make sure that they get those resources properly. And we know they use them in every product that they're making. And DR Congo is the biggest um, miner of cobalt. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure if we dig deep, we're going to find out why there are so many conflicts and unrest in DR Congo and these big corporations are just benefiting from it. Mali cuts defense ties with France over security violations. Mali's ruling junta has said it was breaking off from its defense accords with France, condemning flagrant violations of its natural sovereignty by the French troops there. Colonel Maiga said, quote, For some time now, the government of the Republic of Mali notes with regret a profound deterioration in the military cooperation with France. Well, we saw this coming with everything unfolding and just every little thing that is happening between Mali and France. It's just, it's kind of like a no-brainer that they would get to this place. Now, we just sit and watch what's going to happen because we all know how France can be vindictive. And they've been trying to put on sanctions with them or supporting the sanctions Equas have put on Mali thus far. So it's not hard to believe that France will try to do something about this because Mali just is not with them anymore and they're refusing them. And I feel like that will hurt their ego and their relationship is already... Bad. Ethiopia foils cyber attack on Nile Dam. Ethiopian authorities on Tuesday said they had stopped international cyber attack attempts targeting the massive Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam and the country's major financial institutions. Shumete Gizau, the Director General of Ethiopian Information Network Security Agency, said, quote, the failed cyber attacks include attempts to impede the works of the GERD by targeting 37,000 interlinked computers used by financial institutions. Well, thank God that they were able to stop it because 
I'm pretty sure was going to affect us in general, Ethiopians, with 37,000 attacks. That looks like an organized attack to me. And I think there needs to be a further investigation into it. Who did this? Who is behind it? And what can we do about it in the future to protect ourselves from cyber attacks? Anyways, fam, let us know down below what your thoughts are about the topics we've just discussed. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.